Hello, everybody. A very warm welcome to Wine with Jimmy here on the world of YouTube. Now, this is a wine educational channel really designed to help those of you uh, getting into wine in more depth, maybe for your own personal enjoyment, but maybe more likely for wine qualifications such as this video here. This is on the wines of the world. That's D3 for the WSET level four. That's the diploma. And it's on Burgundy. So welcome to series five of this part. This is on wine laws and gastronomy. And the first one here we're looking at, so there you are, uh, we're looking at wine business. It's actually going to be broken into two parts and then gastronomy will be on the third section. Part one, this video is the only free content available on YouTube. Parts two and three available only on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. You wouldn't regret if you visited there to look at all of the extra content we have, flashcards, written questions, multiple choice, and of course, exclusive video content. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, the best thing you can do is in the comments section below this video, scribble away and we will be in touch. Make sure you also click like and subscribe whilst you are down there. And please find all the social media handles at the bottom of every slide. So let's begin to look at wine business for Burgundy. So this is really going into um, really the structure of the wine business. Uh, for many of us, not the most romantic side of the industry, but nonetheless important, certainly if you are studying the more e e sort of uh, e economic side of the industry. So um, first thing to mention with Burgundy, as with many French regions, is that it is complex. Uh, so there's a lot to look at. Now, historically, most of the trade went through the large négociants, the merchants who would buy grapes or maybe must or even finished wine from other growers. So really what they can get their hands on. Now, today there are still quite an important amount of these négociants, which are well known and they are well regarded. And many of them date back to the 19th century, including the likes of the picture we have here, the, the label of Albert Bichot, but also the likes of Favelli, uh, Joseph Drohan, uh, Louis Jadot, Bouchard, uh, which is commonly now known as Bouchard Père et Fille. Uh, so and the list goes on of these négociants. Um, solid names, of course, practicing wine production for uh, many years, some of them over a century, uh, and of course, well known for finding good examples of, um, of, of the label that they are producing. Now, since the 1970s, 1980s, there has been a move towards more domain bottling. So what we mean by this is um, not selling on grapes, must or wine to a negotiant, but more actually producing their own wine. So in these are farmers that have their own control of the vineyards and have started bottling their own produce. So this is what we mean by domain bottling. Um, and we also see some of those acting as um, negotiants in their own right as well. Uh, so adding to their portfolio by buying in grapes, must or wine. And the example we've got on the slide here is the excellent Domaine du Jacques. So on the left hand side, it says Domaine du Jacques Claude de la Roche Grand Cru. And that is controlled as a vineyard or a vineyard site by Domaine du Jacques and, and then labeled as such. On the right hand side, uh, this is du Jacques Fil et Père, which is in fact fruit that they um, purchase. Uh, so it then says vinified, aged and bottled at Dujac, just above Dujac uh, Philippère. Uh, but <clears throat> the grapes would have been purchased in that instance. Uh, so you start to see these differences. Um, and these, these are because I mean, some of these uh, small domains have done remarkably well. And they're able to then um, gain connections and contracts with growers to increase their production. And of course, most people don't see this on the label. 
Many people you know, might hear that Dujac is a quality name and not make the differentiation between Domaine Dujac on the left and then Dujac Philippeur on the right. They just see the word Dujac. Uh, and it is a certainly uh, a, a name of quality um, across the board. So you're going to get some level of quality, but there is a differentiation about um, who has full control of the fruit. So what is it made up of, the industry? So there are several types. I've just mentioned some of them. First of all, growers or farmers. Now, businesses that have vineyard holdings and sell their grapes, or maybe they make, um, you know, they, they crush into a must uh, for um, ease of storage, but then they sell that on to negotiants. So grapes is typically what happens, however, uh, but maybe grapes or must, sometimes wine, are sold on to negotiants. There are several thousand growers, and typically, their holdings are divided into small parcels in different vineyards and villages. Um, and this is typically because of the fragmentation of Burgundy uh, from the French Revolution, but then also, of course, laws of inheritance. And, and these big factors meant that the land became very uh, fragmented in this area. Uh, so it's not that they will just have one uh, contiguous vineyard area. It'll have to be spread out across the region. Then we have domains. Uh, so these are businesses that own vineyards and make wine from them. Uh, and they sell under their own domain name. You'll see here is Louis Jadot. Louis Jadot is actually um, a negociant, typically found on the label as Maison Jadot or Maison Louis Jadot. But here you'll see Domaine Gagey at the bottom, which is in fact controlled by them. Uh, and this is Chambon Moussini. And it's a premier crew. Uh, so that is the domain name. The negociants we've mentioned as well. So these are typically typically large businesses that buy grapes, must or wine, and they finish them and bottle them for sale under their own name. So here you go. Uh, this doesn't say anything about the domain of Louis Jadot. It just says Louis Jadot, and it says aged and bottled by. Uh, Louis Jadot. So this is possible that, you know, this is a, a wine which is then purchased by Louis Jadot and then they age it and bottle it, um, taking that from the label. This is quite a large production that they do, the Macon Village, for example. And I said typically negociants are large. Remember, um, any domain could actually apply to be a negociant in terms of buying in some grapes to supplement their, their range. So they can, of course, be smaller. Uh, productions as well. Um, now, there are some very small negociants, micro negociants as well, smaller businesses that buy grapes from often very high quality, uh, top quality vineyards, and then they make the wine and sell them under their own name. Uh, and this is the likes here of Benjamin Leroux, as you'll see just here, close in Denis Grand Cru. And then, of course, cooperatives, um, something more important in Burgundy, in the extreme north and the extreme south of the region, less important in the Côte d'Or, but in places like Chablis um, and then Maconnet and Chalonnais is where we tend to find most of the cooperatives, uh, majorly the bookends. So the Chablis and then the Maconnet, for example. Uh, in Chablis, we've got the example here, La Chablisienne, um, which have access to you know, a real wide scope of vineyards in um, Chablis, including Grand Cru. Uh, the Maconnet, for example, something like the Cave de Luni, for example, down towards Macon, and then some in the Cap Coach Chalonnais as well. Um, so there we go. That actually is the conclusion of this first part. Please do join me for the second part uh, when we start to look in, into a little bit more detail about uh, the finite details of uh, the wine business here. Um, so that's part two, part three with gastronomy, both part two and three only available on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. If you're watching the video for the first time, we do have hundreds and over a thousand videos available for the diploma at your fingertips if you sign up, plus exclusive content. 
Um, any questions, again, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below or utilize the social media at the bottom of every slide. And if you're in London, please come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you very much. Ciao for now.